started some years ago when someone in the protein interaction uh, team at DBI um, was looking for a way to visualize uh, protein sequences. And this person working in this project realized that different groups inside DBI and outside as well had different representations for the same thing, uh, different visual representations for the same thing. So, and, um, as it was already something available out there, this person tried to reuse something uh, in there in order to integrate it to the web side of the, uh, he was developing at the time. And it was not possible uh, because uh, all these uh, sequence representations that were available, at least at EBI, they were um, highly integrated in the website of each group, but they were totally embedded, and it was not possible to use them in an isolated way or to integrate it to other websites. So um, this is uh, the idea behind BioJS. If you want to expose something, if you want to have a little representation of something that is quite common across uh, different teams, across different uh, projects, then let's going to do it uh, in a modular way so people can use it, people can uh, put it in some other place or can also use it in an isolated way and which use their own data as well, not just their type of um, data. So this is the idea behind BioJS. At a glance, a BioJS is a collection of JavaScript components, and all of these components follow a common guideline. And uh, the main uh, aim of BioJS is target visual representation, but you can also have the JavaScript parsing the data or um, processing the data. It is started in 2011 as a student project. I already said the story about it. Uh, the first release was done at EBI um, in 2012 in December. And 2013 there was the first publication about this project. And as people started to work and create different components, a collection was created in the F1000 research first collection was published um, at the beginning of this year. Also this year, BioJS participated for the first time in the Google Summer of Code. And um, after the Google Summer of Code, uh, there was a BioJS 2.0 release. People involved in BioJS is mainly the community of developers and collaborators, and of course the people that is currently using uh, those um, components, but the users at the end are also developers because they integrate these components into their websites. <coughs> so we have a um, development community in GitHub. You can find all the BioJS code there. Also, if you want to learn about BioJS, you can go to edubiojs.net and you can get general information from BioJS.net. It's the places that you can go if you want more information. So I mentioned uh, that we move um, this year in July to BioJS 2.0. So BioJS 1.0 had a big score. It was a library, so it imposed certain rules about inheritance and the event model. Uh, the build process was done with uh, a tool called JLS Talk that relied on Raven, but it was not working for everybody. It worked pretty well for Linux systems, uh, but not for Windows, and sometimes it was even difficult. We also realized that JavaScript people don't really like making too much. And um, well, um, it was not compatible also with some of the modern tools for um, dependency management and build uh, JavaScript components and so on. So this year we moved to BioJS 2.0. We don't have a core anymore, but guidelines, and we kept an even model to make the events uh, compatible across different uh, components. We are using now uh, technologies that offer a better support for model and dependency management. 
trend, and the developers are free to use their preferred technologies. Um, this change was actually um, led by developers because I found that the previous version was like too, too fixed, so they really want to be free to use anything that they want to do. So now BioJS is open that really. The development guidelines are the same guidelines that you have for any software development. It's just make it simple. Just do one thing at a time. Don't try to do everything at the same time. Use models. Separate the data retrieval from the data process from the data visualization. And document all your code. Provide examples so people will be able to use it. Make it open. We are using GitHub uh, to provide information about all the components. And share the component. So if you have a component that uh, fit into the BioJS idea, just uh, share it with the BioJS community in the BioJS registry so everybody can know about it. And uh, we are using the um, Node package model as the technology to distribute these modules. So this is the technology that is most recommended in PM. Uh, for the model dependency, we are using CommonJS because it's highly integrated to NPM, but you can also use RequireJS if uh, you want. Uh, we encourage people to use different test um, suites, but um, it's, it's not mandatory. It's just that if you use uh, tests, if you use uh, dependency management, the more things you use, and the higher your run will be in the registry, so people will probably prefer something that was tested than something that was not. So it will give you like a popularity run in the BioJS registry. And by now, as there is no fix for you can use a JavaScript or transpilers. You can use coffee script if you prefer that and pure JavaScript. Um, if you want to participate in the community, then you can join the BioJS Google Groups. And if you want to share something that you have already uh, created for BioJS, then we have the BioJS registry. Here you can see what I was talking about before. Um, you will get some runs depending on how robust is your component or not. Uh, as I mentioned before, this year uh, BioJS participated for the first time in the Google Summer of Code. The Google Summer of Code is a program. Uh, by Google and uh, it encourages students to participate in open source. In uh, open source uh, development. And the idea is to get young people to participate in software since they are at school actually. At the beginning the projects apply to the Google School of Code. If they are accepted then they start um, so um, the students apply uh, for um, the projects, the different projects that are available there. And at the end, the students are selected and they work with the mentors uh, during three months during the summer. Uh, for BioJS, this was ideal to bring new ideas for BioJS and also to get more people involved. And it was uh, thanks to the BioJS uh, participation in Google Summer Code that we called uh, the second version of uh, the BioJS. Um, now I'm going to tell you what we aim to do in this biohackathon. Uh, there is a recent publication that Gray, Jock, and Malone related to competency driven sets of convenience. So the idea is that if you have different uh, data sets, then it may be that you don't have a link between an entity in one data set and an entity in another data set. In this example that I'm showing here, we are supposing that we have ensemble on one side and Unicode on the other side, and there is no direct link between the two of them. So you can create a link between the ensemble polypeptide and the unipod protein. It's a link set and we are using an um, ontology for that. But if you find that it is more convenient to create a link set from the gene, the ensemble gene, to the unipod 
between the new philosophy. So the idea is, um, from the biogenesis point of view, to create a pine finder across multiple data sets. So what we are going to do during this biohackathon is uh, mature this idea a little bit more with uh, Simon and James, and then working with the finder algorithm, and then working the visualization route following the biogenesis guidelines. That's it. I just want to thank uh, to the Biogenes community, the people involved, uh, and the collaborators to the API of the report and of course to the